Our world is in a situation like never before. We're relying on more and more technology to keep us connected. However, that doesn't mean that because we're physically apart that the bullying stops. Do you know the signs and how to deal with cyberbullying? Join us as we discuss this important and hard to deal with topic on this edition of My Spectrum Life podcast. Hello and welcome to the My, pa- My Spectrum Life podcast. <laughs> my name is Jessica and I'm an autism mom. With me is my good friend, Kelsey. Hello, I'm a retro behavior technician. How are you doing today? I- I'm doing okay. Um, it's been tough researching tonight's topic. I know that's right. Um, it's, it's a hard topic tonight, honestly, on both ends between being a special ed teacher and of course, you're going to share experience later. Mm -hmm. um, But of someone who has personally experienced that with their child, tonight's a hard topic. It really is across the board. Uh, Tonight, we're talking about Um, cyberbullying. I had when we, as Kelsey mentioned, I we actually this is this is fresh. This is fresh because something happened um, to my son just within the last few days. Um, and I remember my mom had sent me a book, um, about this because this is not the first time my son has been bullied. And as an autism mom, uh, like so many autism moms out there and so many on the spectrum period, bullying is not, uh, is not unheard of when it comes to those who are on the spectrum. And, you know, um, I also myself was bullied while I was in school. Um, I was the non uh nike wearing weird kid so i got i you know i i got made fun of all the time um for various different reasons and it didn't really help um there was one year that i remember that was really tough because my dad was working for a classmate's father and he had to quit the job because my the, the equipment my dad was working with was um no longer safe and he had the right to quit, but that kind of got brought home and then brought back to school mm. by the other student. And so I felt the brunt of it. But anyway, um, that's my sad story. But um, <laughs> there's a lot of us who have that story, uh, something similar. But my mom had thought of this book for me, um, for me and my son, because Uh, Curtis underwent a lot of bullying in uh, brick and mortar school. And that's one of the reasons I decided to pull him into Connections Academy, which is a virtual um, school. Um, And it's called uh, The Bullying Breakthrough. And it's by Jonathan McKee. And um, we will have the link for this down in um, in the description. I think it's already in the description. Um, It'll be in the show notes. Um, One of the things I like about this book is it is a workbook type thing. It actually has at the end of each chapter, there are discussion questions. Oh, you can't see it. Um, But there are discussion questions. So you can go through in a setting as a teacher, as a group of teachers or a group of parents that want to make a difference. This will tell you how to do it. And um, one of the things the author commented and said that I thought was so very interesting is when he talks about the fact that when he was in school, and it's the same for me, when I was in school, home was a safe haven. Correct. The bullying stopped because you could go home and get away from them. Correct. It doesn't stop now. Nope. Because every time somebody picks up their phone, I'm snapping at my husband, it's with them 24 seven. It's here. Or when they pick up their gaming controls, it can be there. Yep. So um, we're going to go ahead and get into this. Um, and 
what we wanted to talk about tonight was how to see and the signs and deal with cyberbullying because it right. is a huge it's something huge i mean that i've got some statistics to show you and it's actually kind of mind-boggling the first set of statistics um i got them from the cyberbullying research center and this is a um cyberbullying victimization by gender and that data was um, and you can go to their website which is cyberbullying.org to find all of this information right. um, red is female blue is male so on average the if you look at that most situations wow. i mean it's kind of it's ridiculous is what it is um Shouldn't flat be high, out not high in the first place honestly. no no, it shouldn't. And this is just of 12 to 17 year olds who took a survey. 12 to 17. That's just 12 to 17. Um, and that was over 30 days. Wow. That's a 2019 statistics. Um, the next one I found um, was from the CDC, and this is cyberbullying by state. The states that are blank, there is no data. The rest of the states, you can see the amount. Wow. There is, you know, you're going to have. South Carolina is pretty high. So is Tennessee. And yeah, it does depend on the population, but still. There's no excuse still. for it. No, there isn't. Um, and that is specific. Those two stats are specific to cyberbullying. Now, I am, I am subscribed to a magazine called Autism Parenting Magazine. Correct. And there is, was an article this last month, and there are a couple of statistics in there about autism and bullying overall. So this is just flat-out bullying. And there's a couple of quotes I want to read to you. Um, the first one says, An estimated 46 to 94% of students with autism report being victims of bullying compared to only 28% of the general education population. That's nearly doubled. That was a statistic for 2018. Wow. Um, and then another quote, um, the author is Crystal Gallagher and um, the article is called How Society Fails Children with Autism. Uh, according to research, Social vulnerability is the strongest predictor of becoming a victim of bullying, especially among the high-functioning autism population or those with Asperger's syndrome. Social vulnerability. vulnerability. That hit me like a ton of bricks because that right there is where a good, that's one of the biggest uh portions of autism that is so difficult is social interactions and they make it 10 times harder yeah with it yeah that bothers they do. me a lot me too me too it bothers me and you know what i hope that every single one of you who are watching or listening to this right now it should bother you too it really should as much as it's bothering us right now because it's not okay it's not okay bullying period whether your child is autistic or not is not okay nobody should be a victim of bullying period nope um but uh anyway a question that we want to ask you let us know in the chat did you know the stats were this high and that's only in 2018. It's been two years. You know they've doubled. Mm -hmm. And the other stats for cyberbullying for th kids in general was 2019. What do you think they look like right now? I don't even want to know. I, I don't want to. It's going to skyrocket this year because of this. Oh, it is with the virtual online learning. Oh, it's mm -hmm. definitely going to. With us being at home constantly. But um, as parents, as teachers, we've got to look out for our kids. Um, 
So one of the things you can do is you've got to know the signs. You have to know the signs. Yep. So um, now I got this stompoutbullying.org had a tip sheet. This was a tip sheet. Signs your child is a victim of cyberbullying. Um, they had a lot of different uh, tip sheets to identify bullying, to identify how to talk to your kids about bullying, all that kind of stuff for both parents and teachers um and you know people and kids um a lot of good information there um let's go through these uh signs loss of interest in the computer and cell phone especially i mean they've been like totally <laughs> almost addicted to it and then they don't even want to use it uh won't talk about why they're avoiding their computer and cell phone they get tense and stressed out when receiving an email, a text, or a met or an instant message. That should be a huge, huge one. I mean, if they used to just grab their phone and look at it immediately, but all of a sudden you see your kids shying away from it, you need to stop and have a, a talk with your kid and you don't get upset. Correct. Don't get upset. You got to be calm and be a friend to them and help them get through that because if you don't, they're not going to handle it. Um, if your child is on the spectrum, they're not going to be able to process the information and you've got to be a friend to them and help them be a safe adult for them right. to talk to about this. Right. Um, if you see them start to withdraw from family and friends or school, um, yeah. if they become sad and angry, frustrated, anxiety, depression, mm-hmm. As a teacher, if you see kids' as grades decline, that's a big indicator, isn't it? It's a huge indicator. Um, a lot of times teachers want to say, oh, they're not paying attention or they're sleeping a lot through class. Well, your first and number one is that they're sleeping a lot through class. Why? Hmm. Why are they sleeping a lot through class? And then why are they grades failing? Is it because they're sleeping or is there an alternative motive? And nine mm -hmm. times out of ten, it's because of peer pressure or bullying. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so make sure that you know those signs. Um, here's a question for you. Um, have you seen any of those signs in your children? Go ahead and drop us. If you just, this is one of those things where I guess I wouldn't say, um, you don't necessarily have to, uh, say anything unless you want to send us a personal message. Um, That's right. but think about it really just think about it um you can drop us an in, an email at info at myspectrumlife.com if there's if you'd like to us you know if, if you've seen these signs and you're not sure what to do we can point you to some resources Correct. um and help you with that um because nobody should deal with this you know the one and number one causes of suicide bullying bullying um i pulled a so one of the things I did um, getting ready for this is I went on to, I thought, okay, maybe I need to de define cyberbullying. Um, and it kind of sent me down a rabbit trail because I went to the on an online dictionary and right. it had the use of uh, the word cyberbullying in a recent article dated um, out of a newspaper in Arizona okay. in early uh, August. 10 year old girl took her life because of being cyber bullied. 10 years old. In that article, the mom pleaded for other parents to become aware. Talk to your kids, be aware, know the signs. And part of the signs is that depression. Part of those mm -hmm. signs are being withdrawn, personality change, grades declining. It's not just because your kid is acting up. It doesn't mm -hmm. because they have a disability. It, it, it is that sometimes being sad or angry or frustrated has a major um, cause to them. And this is the only way they know how to express it to you. Yeah, that is for sure. Um, the next thing. Um, so if you know these signs, make sure you know them. Don't think that you can monitor everything every second of the day. No. <laughs> it's no. not going to happen. Not going to happen. 
You do. I gave up that a long time ago as a teacher. <laughs> oh my goodness. Um, there are uh, apps and programs that can help you with all this Correct. stuff. And not only are you helping to monitor for cyberbullying, you're also being and protecting your children, yourself Correct. from so many more evils. Correct. I mean, let's just face it, predators are out there. They lie about their age. All the time, all the time. Any sort of predator will do anything they need to, to get a hold of what they want to get a hold of. Exactly. That's exactly. what basically a predator is. I mean, you think of a lion. Is a lion just gonna, <laughs> if you put a fence up, is the lion gonna not go after the gazelle, I ask you? Negative. No. It's up to the gazelle how to get away or port to safety. Mm -hmm. So that's what we need to do for our own families, for ourselves, for our kids. So find some apps, find some programs. Mm -hmm. um, so I've seen uh, sometimes your uh, virus protections. Correct. Like, uh, I mean, the two big ones out there that immediately come to mind are Norton and McAfee. Correct. Some of them have a family uh, monitoring thing that you can add on. Mm -hmm. um, what it, the schools, uh, tell me about what schools have. Um, our district was able to provide uh, school computers and laptops, which every single one of them have been programmed with the firewall, mm -hmm. meaning they can't get onto YouTube or they, they're restricted to what websites they're allowed to get onto. This also means they're restricted on um, being able to communicate with other students from time to time. Mm -hmm. um, we also have the ability, it's just called Hapara. Um, we can look into what websites or what you're saying across to each student as a teacher. Mm -hmm. um, also pretty much puts you in a lock um, within the website. Nope, you're not going anywhere but this screen and I can block you from everything else just wirelessly through Hapara. Um, nice. So this is just kind of talking to give you some child some safety. So if you do mm -hmm. are virtually, I highly recommend don't use your personal. Um, really use those school laptops, even if they crash from time to time or give you Internet problems. They mm -hmm. have that firewall that you mm -hmm. may not have on your own Internet or own computer. Right. And if you do a virtual school like I do, you know, invest in those programs that are going to help you monitor because, um, Yes, you're required to be on. You have to be on. And that's part of the agreement that you sign is that, you know, they're not liable for right. your own computer and stuff. So um, we have, <coughs> excuse me, that's my allergies and stuff today. Um, yeah. Um, the, we, as our, we've chosen to use Norton um, okay. as our family. That's just what we have. Um if you download, and I know this this gets me every time, if you download Adobe um, Reader, I think I had to look over at my husband, Reader is what it's called. If you're already using one, they it will uh, download a free trial of McAfee yes. automatically. Automatically. Which is great for people who don't have anything, <sighs> but it really messes us up. With because, Norton, because they yes, don't talk, those they, programs do not they, talk. <laughs> they don't play nicely together. No, they don't. <laughs> <laughs> so just make sure and find a program that works for you. Um, I had was kind of looking around at some different programs online, and a friend had told me about Bark. Have you heard of that one? No, I've, excuse um, me, no, I've not. It's supposed to be pretty good. And I'm looking into the family settings on um, our Xbox. There you go. So what, um, what Bark used for? Is it for gaming or is it used for laptops? iPhones, laptops, all of that. And it actually monitors quite a few different apps. There um, you go. I, I kind of want to try it out and see how it works. Um, see, right. you know, what it does. So I don't know. It gives you, from what I saw today, it gives you a seven-day free trial. Mm -hmm. So, you know, and it's either $9 or $14 a month. So it's pretty... I mean, on their two plans, so that's pretty cost-effective considering. Considering, yeah, that's still cheaper than Netflix. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just saying. 
Uh, yeah, I mean, ditch a couple of Starbucks lattes to protect your child. I'm down for it. I'm down for it. And the reason why we bring up some of these apps um, and some of these things, a lot of times predators or cyberbullying does happen through viruses. It's not just viruses within the computer, but it's also viruses that open up windows um, that you thought oh, yeah. were firewalled or safed, and it opens up their world to potentially be a victim. Mm -hmm. of these things. This is why we tell you about these apps so you can protect against those viruses and those predators. It's, it's great. We, uh, but we, we don't want to scare you. Right. <laughs> we don't want to Into you. like total paranoia. We no. just want you to be aware. Exactly. exactly. We want you to be aware. Um, now you had said, um, let's see, one of the things you told, oh, kids YouTube. Yes. Kids Still YouTube, YouTube is it. not kids YouTube. Um, YouTube is a such a big entity um, that it's hard for them to maintain their expectations or check up on every single um, username or screen user. They, so even with you know what's odd? What's that? They'll like do something on say my husband's channel, which is geocaching, mm -hmm. or my kid's channel, which is geocaching. And they'll send us some sort of thing about you're not, you know, you're not uh, according to such and such a protocol. And I'm like, for pity's sake, did you actually watch the video? <laughs> Whereas you have the other ones who lie about their age on kids tube and mm -hmm. totally not make kids appropriate movies or on YouTube's. Yes. That's how so. the big, um, what was it? Was it, it was just recently with the big suicide game, the big mm -hmm. challenge that came upon kids tube, and it was a ch I forget what challenge that was. Oh my goodness, that's and awful. it would just randomly pop in your kids tube video and just keep going. Yeah, well, and that's and the one thing I think that they're relying on instead of like I said, a pair of eyes because there would be a pair of eyes actually watching is a computer algorithm. Correct. Um, algorithms are what um, do a lot of the um, out of policing. Correct. And uh, per se, kind of sort of, you know, kind of look at things. So an algorithm via a computer isn't necessarily going to catch every single thing like that. Right. Um, it just can't. Can't. Um, because human nature is human nature. And I'll just leave it at that. <laughs> um, right. Now you were saying, you were telling me something about the iPad and locking the screen for Correct. kids um, things. Cause I would never done this. <laughs> funny story. So when I used to be an RBT, I would bring my iPad as a reinforcer to those with kids mm -hmm. and they would play on it and I would have all these apps locked. So my adult, apps would not even show up on their my iPad. So they couldn't even surf the web if they wanted to. They couldn't even download new apps. It's whatever I was allowing them to play. And by adult apps, you mean like your Facebook and your things like correct. that, not Pinterest, some of that other right. stuff. Right, correct. <laughs> like Pinterest, YouTube, Safari, and things like that. Yeah. Well, a year later, I went to go look at my iPad, and I hadn't used it since. Looked at my iPad, and I was like, uh husband, Lewis, um, wh what happened to my Safari? Totally forgot that you can actually go into your settings and turn uh -huh. on um, your kid version or friendly version and within uh -huh. your settings. And that's not an iOS 10 thing. What I'm running on iOS 8, iOS 7 on this iPad. Oh, wow. Okay. And I was able to block everything. And so what it does is it hides those apps. Mm -hmm but it acts like you can still go between screens, but it right. hides those apps. So pretty much okay. makes those apps. And it, I totally forgot about that until I did. <laughs> oh yeah. I was about to call <laughs> Apple. I was about to like hardcore, like reset my Apple iPad. It was just, don't forget oh. guys. <laughs> okay. <laughs> but you can. So you our can. question for you is, have you found any good apps to, or programs that you use um, to monitor your child's online activities. We would love to know what those are. So please drop us a comment or send us an email. Um, we'd love to know what those are. Um, 
the next thing that we see is, you know, there's two more things that we've got that are pretty important to help with this cyberbullying right. thing. Um, the next thing is to make sure, and it's your house, you set your rules. Correct. So set up your, now this is, I have an all caps, your, okay? So it's your house, so you set up the rules for what works for you in your house. Right. It's up to you. We're not going to give you any recommendations because it is your house. Correct. So you set up game time and screen time rules. If you have a kid um, who is very, you know, autistic and needs those visual reminders, create a visual reminder and post it. Correct. <laughs> I'm getting ready to post a ton of them on my, around my house. <laughs> like the one that says put a plate underneath your macaroni and cheese in the microwave. Um, <laughs> yeah. No, I'm not upset about the mess it makes. <laughs> Make sure you go over those procedures if your child comes into contact with an appropriate Correct. message. Make a visual. Post it. Yep. Emphasize the need for internet safety. And above all, be kind. Mm -hmm. And teach your kids how to be kind online in right. what they say and what they do. Okay, so set your rules, set your times, go over those procedures, make your visuals, emphasize that safety and be kind. What is something that you use, one of the house rules that you have that we didn't talk about, something that you think um, is that has actually really helped at your house? Let us know what one of those rules are. Um, the last thing that we're going to talk about real quick is um, gaming etiquette and safety. Correct. Now, you get number one because hmm, I'm going to tell you right now, I'm not a gamer. Um, so gaming has its own different kind of lingo. Um, it has its own different etiquette. And when we say etiquette, we're talking about how do you ask for permission? How do you um, come across to certain gamers when you're texting or talking? Um, because a lot of times when we are gaming, we talk over the Xbox as we're gaming. Um, like you got to go get them, go left. So you have to be very specific as also as texting on um, mm -hmm. once another. Do you want to meet up during this time? How do you address those? So proper behavior while gaming is very important. Um, a lot of times you'll hear kiddos say curse words because they get frustrated with the game. Are they really saying it at the child? Are they saying it um because they're frustrated you want to monitor those kind of things mm -hmm. um because um we'll be honest not everybody is monitored as there should be um especially when you have 17 year olds playing with 10 year olds on xbox what's the biggest yes. one right now fortnite that's the biggest one right now you have what mm -hmm. i have my middle schoolers playing with my high schoolers right now um Ugh. yeah but they know each other so it's kind of a little different story yeah. um but I'm just saying for those who don't know, just know that your ages across are mixed because it is such a wide range. So know those yeah. proper behaviors, um, knowing when to share personal information, um, meaning don't share where you live, including city, state, um, country, continent. Let's even go that far. Mm -hmm. um, don't share any birth dates no. um, within the personal. Don't even share your nickname or name. Um, mm -hmm. When I knew when I used to play, my mom said, all right, always give a nickname. A nickname that I would never use in real life. It was just a mm -hmm. nickname within my gamer tag or what's known as a gamer tag. Mm -hmm. um, what's your name? Hey, my name is my gamer tag. Like, that's my name and that's what I yeah. respond to. Nothing um, else. Like, like they did, um, just as a, a quick reference, like uh, per Parcival and um, what's her name in uh, Artemis. Ready Player Game? Huh? Artemis. Artemis. <laughs> in, yes. <laughs> in, in Ready Player One. Those had nothing to do with their names. Correct. Correct. Um, and so, you know, they, their gamer tags were completely different from who they really were. Correct. Um, and when you're making your gamer tag, try not to use your real name or any identifiers. Correct. Um, that is uh, something that, in, and, you know, one of the things I do know, um, there are courses out there. I know that like at our school, we go through it every year in um, our ed tech class. Okay. About, um, what's the word? Uh, 
etiquette online, cybersecurity things. Like, it's not cybersecurity, but how you're supposed to be online and how you're supposed to protect yourself online. Right. Um, the kids go through that. Um, as a parent, I even have an entire course to go through that I could go through. Wow. Um, I haven't gone through it yet. <laughs> I think I did, like, <laughs> when Curtis was in first grade. Um, I haven't gone through it again. <laughs> um, I don't know. Um, maybe, maybe that's why I kind of got into um, the situation this, this past weekend. Um, this is why, and this is how it can happen. And this, so this happened to Curtis this weekend. Um, he was online playing with um, Xbox with his friend from church. Right. And his buddy is in another group. Um, I don't, I'm not sure what exactly happened because Curtis was sitting right next to Nicole downstairs. Um, I was upstairs, you know, typing away, researching, doing some stuff that I needed to get done. All of a sudden, Nikki comes running upstairs. Mommy, 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 they're being mean to Curtis on Xbox. I'm like, what? I come running downstairs, but as I come running downstairs, before I got to Curtis, I got a hold of this mama bear self because it hit me that, okay, maybe Curtis, because, you know, he's got pragmatic um, speech difficulties. He has graduated out of his program, but just because you graduate out of your speech, pragmatic speech program, doesn't mean you always use those skills. <laughs> skills, that's right or know when to use those skills. And so the first thing I did was ask, Curtis, are you okay? What happened, buddy? He said, they were making fun of me, mom. So I got out of there really quick and I just shut it off. I said, good job, buddy. That's exactly what you needed to do. And he knew that because he'd gone through all those courses um, year after year. If somebody is saying something inappropriate, you either get out of the, the program, shut down your right. computer immediately. You right. gotta know to do that. And I knew not to jump all over his case because number one, why in the world should I? He's the victim. Number two, if there was a slight chance that he said something, I needed to talk to his buddy's mom. Right, so, not him. Right. right, because you know it's hard for our kids with autism to express themselves. Sometimes they can't get put, you know, the words together. So I was messaging her and we talked a good bit. And she said, she checked with, she checked with her son and he said, no, Curtis did not do a single thing to deserve that. And he needs wow. to block those friends. And Curtis told me later when he could process the thing, he goes, he's a good friend. He stood up for me because he mm -hmm. did. Curtis's friend friends told like the other that. kids. He's, yeah, exactly. Exactly. For those kids who are neurotypical, for parents of neurotypical kids who have an autistic kid that's in your youth group that your, your child is around or talks to, it's okay. Try to be their friend. Try to reach out. As the mom of the autistic child can help you know how to interact. And if you're open to it, you know, um, Curtis's friend's mom and I were just talking back and forth about the situation, about how we should, you know, handle it. So we knew exactly what had happened. And I knew then, okay, it wasn't something Curtis had done. It wasn't a failure, um, on, you know, of not understanding the situation or something. Eventually the other kids got on and apologized to Curtis, but it broke my heart. You know, it was right. so tough to know that. These kids just started, they don't know him. Right. I mean, there's no way they could have known who Curtis was from their, um, from the gamer tags. But they just started being mean to this autistic kid who didn't deserve it. They started right. being mean to a kid. They didn't even know. I think they knew he was autistic. They but did. still. Yeah. Autism or not doesn't give you the right to treat somebody no. like that online. No, it right. doesn't. 
Right. So, you know, Curtis did right. He got off and he came and he told me. And that's what needs to happen because as parents, we've got to do that. That's right. So as, as we wrap up tonight, parents, I'm talking to you. I need you to make sure that you start paying attention to your kids. You have to spend time with them and know what's going on in their life so that you can know these signs. But more than that, you have to be an example and teach your kids how to be kind to others and how to stand up for others when these situations happen. That's where it's got to start, parents. It's got to start at home. And that's our responsibility as parents. We have to teach our kids how to handle it and how to be kind. We can't expect the teachers at the school to be teaching the kids how to be kind. That's not their job. They teach the kids. They instruct them. We've got to teach our kids how to be kind and we've got to look out for our kids and know what's going on in their lives. Kelsey. Very well said. And as teachers, I'm talking to you, teachers, talking to you, admin. As teachers, we've got to recognize these signs as well within the hallways. Um, tell them to stop within the hallways. Monitor those hallways um, because it may start with the parents, but we can put an end to it um, within the schools. We can teach these kids um, within the schools how to handle those, uh, um, be it another trusted adult. Um, within those schools, be somebody that we can communicate and be a um, someone in between um, a parent and a student. Um, it starts with us. And as students, I'm telling you, students, be a um, stand up for those kids as students within those hallways. Um, mm -hmm. As a teacher, I have your back. Um, if I notice that you are an innocent bystander and you are trying to help somebody, I have your back. I'll make sure that you don't get as big as a uh, reper repercussion as some of those others if I can. Um, but as teachers, mm -hmm. recognize those as well and communicate yep. to those parents. Yes. Um, the Discover Spectrum just told us that they totally agree that it starts with us as parents. And as a parent, if a teacher tells me that my child is being a bully, you better believe. <laughs> There's gonna we got be another some... attitude adjustment, right? Yes. <laughs> We're gonna be grounded from some video games real quick. <laughs> real quick, right? And I mean, it does and sometimes what they're saying as teachers, like it takes as a teacher sometimes. Hey, how could you say that differently next time? Mm -hmm. Give them a warning the first time, and then the second time, uh -uh, I'm reporting you to admin immediately because. I've given you multiple times. I know some other, us teachers talk. Like, do you think we don't talk within the school? Like, <laughs> I know, I know. But most importantly, I have to say, I want to say also to kids, um, and I'm sure, Kelsey, you'll agree with me. Hey, kids out there, if you have heard this and heard the story of, what Curtis went through this weekend. I want you to be like Curtis's friend and stand up, know, stand up right. to those people and say, no, this isn't right. Stop. Because I cannot tell you how grateful I am for his friend saying stop to those other kids. You will make a mother and a father. You will make parents so happy. You will make teachers happy. When you it stand speaks up volumes about their personality, mm -hmm. you got to yeah. have the guts and you got to stand up and say, no, this isn't right. I know that's right. Have that we courage. All, yeah. And we just, we all have to have the courage and the strength to stand up and say enough is enough. No, that's this right. bullying thing has got to stop cyber or in person and know that, you know, it's, it's happening everywhere, even now, even in this situation. And that's why we have to stand up. Um, 
I sent you a a story and um, a news story that I saw um, is happening up in, I want to say New Jersey. I'm not sure exactly, but a town had put in a all-inclusive playground. And um, I think the date of the news story was September 15th. So just last week on this all-inclusive playground, a couple of pit kids, a couple of kids pinned down an autistic child and pulled his pants down. While two other kids, including a 19 year old, stood by and filmed it and posted it to social media. Those are not innocent bystanders. Those are no. the, and those are the bystanders in school. When they talk about school, how like bystanders are going to get in trouble. Those are the mm -hmm. bystanders that are going to get the same repercussions and consequences mm -hmm. as somebody who is doing the bullying. So if you're a bystander and stopping it, you're not going to get in no. trouble. I promise no. you. <laughs> you know what's the one thing, the only good thing, the only good thing out of that story all four are being prosecuted as they should as they as should they should so just be aware people that this is happening even now you know we're still in this pandemic things in certain areas are still locked down to a certain extent or restricted i guess i should say right. um no one understand the bullying doesn't stop just because we're apart. And we've got to stand up and we've got to say, no, this is not yeah. going to happen. Not on my watch. I know that's right. And if, <laughs> imagine what would happen if we all banded together and say, not on my watch. <laughs> A lot. <laughs> <laughs> A lot. Man, we could do so many things. We could change <laughs> so many things if we just said, not on my watch. Uh-uh. Nuh-uh. Yeah. Nuh-uh. <laughs> well, if you have any questions or comments about um, tonight, this, this uh, episode, or if you have uh, any questions for us, any further topics you want us to talk about, something maybe a little more lighter, um, I think... Yes, Discover Spectrum. I love it. Hashtag not on my watch. We got a new hashtag. Yes. Not on my watch. We got a exactly. new trend going. Let's do it. Let's do it. Let's, Let's do it. You know what? If you have decided it's not going to happen on your watch, hashtag Click not the on. the video yourself and hashtag it. Yes. Not on my watch. And, and you know what? Tag us in it. Yep. We would love to see it, you know? it's right. and. Well, yeah, we'll say it right now. Not on my watch. Not on my watch. I'll post mine right after this. I'll post mine. Me too. Um, send us uh, some ideas for some topics or some things that you would like to talk about um, at info at myspectrumlife.com. Um, you can get us at Facebook and Instagram. Tag us with... At myspectrumlife. And then you can find us on Twitter at My Spectrum Life with the number one. And if you're on YouTube, please hit that subscribe button down below so you can get notifications and allows us to know when or allow, allow excuse me, lets you know when we go live. They couldn't see it. You need to take down the banner. There, see? You want to click on my subscribe and you want to click on that bell and the like button. That's see right. that little graphic? Isn't that awesome? Isn't my husband awesome? We love our tech guy. He's amazing. <laughs> so please like and subscribe on our YouTube channel. Yes. Um, we would love to make sure that you hear all the good stuff. We hope that it you think it's good stuff. We think it's good stuff coming out. We're trying to make it good stuff, informative stuff, helpful things, because we want the we want to promote awareness. We want Correct. to support others. Correct. And we want to develop that community That's right. um, because we got to remember we're, we're going to be in this together. Um, it, it takes, it takes a village and sometimes it takes a certain kind of village when it comes to autism. You got that right. So as we always say, with a lot of faith, whole lot of love, a lot of love. 
and a bajillion fidget toys. Fidget toys. <laughs> bajillion is the right word in this instance. I am sure all of you autism moms and dads and caretakers will agree it's a bajillion. Yes, it's a bajillion. <laughs> it's a bajillion fidget toys. We're going to make it. Make it. Thanks, are. guys. Bye. Bye.